What's up, you cutie patooties? 2K still exists, and so do I. I've been playing this game nonstop since it came out in the New Zealand time zone, and I've got mixed feelings about it. The gameplay feels upgraded, but the game itself feels almost the exact same as last year's version with a few alterations here and there. Honestly, it looks like they put about two months of work on top of 2K23, put Kobe's face all over it, and called it a day. I'm mostly a my career and my GM player myself. My GM is the exact same besides them adding LeBron's era. My career is just different. I'll give them credit. I know longer have to make TikToks to progress my basketball career, be bossed around by my unattractive digital girlfriend, put on makeup and walk a runway a thousand times for a shoe deal or sell my soul. So that's a step up. But this year, 2K decided since they couldn't figure out a way to be creative off the court without being cringy, they just mostly focused on basketball in this year's my career. But for a YouTuber like myself, this leaves me with not much content to work with, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'll change the few cutscene dialogues to my liking and actually try to take the game seriously until UFC 5 comes out. I put a lot of thought into how I want my player to play and look, and I think I found a fun career path to take. I don't have an overpowered build for you that's going to dominate the park or make your dick grow two inches. I'm just going to go with a Nikola Jokic build and edit a few minor details. The goal I have in mind is to be a fundamentally sound mix of Nikola Jokic and Dirk Nowitzki. I don't care if I'm fat, unathletic, and on the wrong side of the posters in every game. I'm going to play winning team basketball and eventually shoot the piss out of the ball. You're going to get a glimpse of the experimental player I made earlier to see what the repercussions were for doing everything wrong in this game. Turns out you could blow up the arena in the fourth quarter and you'd still have a key to the city in your next game. So that was never supposed to reach the public eye. I'm sorry you had to see that and I'll give him a ton of plastic surgery here in a second. I put some thought into what team I want my player to play for and the goal I have in mind is to play for the worst team that needs the most help rebuilding. Technically, there's a four-way a tie for the worst team in this year's game between the Hornets, Magic, Spurs, and Wizards. I was very tempted to go to the Hornets, but LaMelo has too bright of a future and would take away too much point guard duties for my taste. The Magic could use a better center, but they're loaded with high potential players and that makes it too easy. The Spurs honestly aren't that bad of a pick because Vic and I could share the 4 and 5 duties, but the flat out worst and unpromising team in the game has to be the Washington Wizards. They just made two terrible blockbuster trades in a row. Their star our players are currently Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma, so I'll be in terrible hands in the nation's capital, and I like it. It's time to take my player's appearance seriously, and what I'm shooting for is an Eastern European player from somewhere between Serbia and Germany, and based on the halfway point between where Jokic and Dirk were born, apparently I would be from St. Polten with two dots over the O, Austria. The bar was set pretty low considering I was starting off with a man that came into this world trying to be flushed down a McDonald's toilet, but here he is, the new and improved Nicole. Nowitzki. He's got just about as much chest hair as he has head hair, but who needs good looks when you're neighbors with the leaders of this country who are a phone call away from flying you out to a private island that'll have it served on a platter, dead or alive. I then spent the next 20 minutes picking out every Jokic and Dirk animation in the game and only upgrading my player to unlock the animations I couldn't have for free. Nikola is a serious player with serious taste. It's time to get out of these generic clothes and throw money down the drain. But I'm not your ordinary player in this game. I'm not going to swags. I went to the elegant Dria Brotter to find myself a proper suit for my first NBA appearance. I casually dropped 16,000 VC on one outfit and another 2,500 on a watch I wasn't even able to see while wearing a suit. I was looking forward to just donating more money to 2K so I can make an open layup, but I can't spend any money right now because I'm currently in the New Zealand time zone. I think I know a way around this, but I accidentally turned myself into the Lonzo Ball meme and I'm gonna have to roll with it. I haven't played 2K in almost a year and I'll be playing the first game of my career as a 74 overall in front of thousands of people. Everything is fine. I make it to the arena and my Puerto Rican father stole my outfit and now it looks like I had to borrow his tie. Looks like we've got security or just stop oil protesters in the background pretending to be crucified right now. I get some basic advice from my Puerto Rican father, but let's be honest, I don't know this man. I'm a foot taller and Caucasian. There's a good chance this is just some random crap head I picked up off the street. Apparently, I'm the most highly touted prospect since LeBron James and have the option of beating MJ's and LeBron's NBA debut totals of 36 and 45 combined stat lines. And considering I haven't played this game in almost a year and I have the skill level of Daniel Tice, I'm going to keep the difficulty on pro for now and move the quarter length to nine minute quarters. I've been in this locker room for 15 seconds and I've already signed a deal with Nike. I still did more work than Colin Kaepernick to become one of their sponsored athletes. We're going to go ahead and turn this dog shit off 
off right away. I've got to go talk to my assistant coach, but apparently all I have for now is his secretary to talk to and we discuss child labor and whatnot for 15 minutes. And I love this. I can already adjust the rotations and they're already a mess. It's going to take me a while to see what works here in Washington, D.C., but currently we have Jordan Poole coming off the bench, plus Landry Shamit and Denny Avdia are starting. Maybe that woman really is our coach. For now, I'm not going to mix things up too much, but Jordan Poole is going to start at point guard and I'll give more minutes to Kyle Kuzma. All right, I'm ready for my first game and I've got someone's cock in my face. It's way too close. I can almost see a bulge if you look very closely. It's really been there for a while and I'm just trying not to look at it. We're matched up with the Pacers for our first game and Miles Turner is actually a pretty difficult matchup for me considering he's fast, black, and can shoot. Really a dangerous mix for me out there. I've got my first tip off here. This is something I'm not going to be good at and ah, oh, fuck. First play of the game. I'm trying to play some help defense and oh my God, I'm so slow. This is going to be a rough game. But hey, I got my first rebound. This is a trick I like to do. I would always like to bring the ball up and keep the mismatch on me, but nope. Miles Turner is going to pick me up. I still get an open layup, but gosh dang it. I really need to get used to this timing. Open three. I got this. I'm white. Let's go. Oh, that was good timing and I miss. Miles Turner posted me up. I'm 265 pounds no i'm a baby take number two maybe that was a fluke right no okay okay we're gonna double team every single time he touches it all right i'm ball hogging now i don't care we're gonna go for the hook and it's green no okay can't make a layup nope sorry rough start for this youtuber but screw it we're gonna keep forcing it and i'm fouled i definitely wasn't gonna make that so thank you miles turner all right we got our first points on the board i'm still trying to remember the controls to this game and we got another mismatch we're gonna take another easy bucket yep i'm a scumbag i'm just gonna keep matching up with tyrese halliburton and abusing him jordan Poole doesn't want my screen yep you're getting traded buddy shot fix oh got him white guy layup let's go we're rolling yeah miles turner you want to go at me yeah triple team get him jordan yeah yeah oh oh okay jordan Poole. fuck you all right, we're rolling now. I'm coming back with 10 points. So I'm going to start doing some of my post work and I'm getting double teamed in my first NBA game. I definitely messed up by not hitting the corner pass there, but don't worry. Jordan Poole is somehow going to one up me by getting called for three in the key. Got a pick and roll here with Denny. I got an open lane. I'm going to slam this in. No, I'm white. Never mind. We're still down about 10 points, but Kyle Kuzma has me covered as one of the only capable shooters on this team. Bruce Brown thinks he can guard me, but I've got about 200 gallons of Pepsi in my body. That's an easy bucket for me. We're down six. I'm just hoping they double team me in the post every time. I don't care if I never have to shoot in this game. Landry Shamit's going to do it for me. I'm kind of liking Landry Shamit. He finds me trailing and I hit the deep three and I'm Katniss Everdeen. We're down one. Jordan to Denny. I'm asking for the pass. I think this is a pass. No, it was a shot. Oh my God. We're so bad. I still get the end one. Go Wizards. We're down one going into the break. I'm using halftime to look up some of the post moves that I forgot how to do. First play of the half. I now know what I have to do. I'm one on one with Miles Turner. I got the footwork. I got the jams and I got the fade away. Miles Turner is going to be nice enough to put himself into a screen. I'm going to slip and put up the slowest layup you've ever seen. Pick and roll here. I'm a little slow in the pass. That is honestly my fault, but we get the ball back. I'm just going to jab it up, let the play develop. And Kyle Kuzma, you have a spot on this team. No one else does so far. Denny Avdia, prove your work to me. Why are you a starter? Uh, yeah, that's not how you set a screen. That, okay, I'll take, okay. My turnover. Yep, my bad. We got Corey Kispert out here setting screens. He's going to fade every time, but you know what? I'm just going to take this in myself for the and one and we're back up once again in the third quarter. The Pacers just want to keep committing hate crimes and abuse the white guys in the pick and roll, and I can't catch up to Miles Turner, so that's going to work once again. They're taking me out while we're down six points in the third quarter. I am worried, but no, they put me back in in the fourth, and we're up five, probably thanks to Danilo Gallinari having 14 points of his own. I get back in and try to make a difference, but no, Danilo's got it. Let this man cook. I've got the mismatch. Danilo has the ball up top and he throws a dime, which leads to the first dunk of my career. I'm 6'11", but honestly, I'm surprised I can do that. Danilo blessed us with that lead and it's time to take it home. I find Kyle Kuzma with the easy post up on Buddy Hill to put us up six. The Pacers are still scoring on us, but we're going to keep abusing Buddy Hill. We do not care. We're trying to hold on to this lead, but they keep going at me in the pick and roll and I get stuck in the help position and they score once again. But if Chino Hills taught me anything, he said, if you can't play defense, just cherry pick and it works. 
I'm trying to send him home with three minutes left. I'm double. Jordan Poole is open, but Jordan Poole shouldn't be in the NBA. Our two-star players are trying to guard the ball, but they forget to actually pay attention, and they hit a three-pointer on us. Jordan Poole has the ball in his hands. I am worried, but he finds Landry Shamit, who just dunks over the entire Pacers team. I'm going to trust Jordan Poole again. I set the screen for him. I'm open, but Jordan Poole, okay. We are up six. And in the end, that's going to be enough to seal the deal. But I need three more points for 40. And I'm going to be a piece of shit and do that myself. We're coming out of this first game with 40 points, five assists, and 14 rebounds. Not my greatest first showing, but I had to dust off some cobwebs. I know I kind of played bad team basketball, no fundamentals. I couldn't remember how to do a post fadeaway for most of the game. So that was a pain in the ass. But we still got the win versus a pretty decent Pacers team. I honestly forgot about the whole goals about beating MJ and LeBron's debut totals, but I guess I did that. So now I've got a frenzy at the press conference with some pretty boring questions and answers, so I'll be taking it away from here. Gary Carson, NBC4 Washington. Even though none of us have ever seen you play before, this was a very anticipated rookie debut. You came away with the win and had a solid performance on the offensive end, but some fans are worried due to your inability to make a layup, your defense in the pick and roll, and some might even say that your weight makes you a liability in the long run. What's your response to those concerns? Well, first of all, I'm concerned with whoever let you leave the house dressed the way you are, you black Ernie Johnson wannabe. Most of that is due to me spending too much money on the suit I bought, which I forgot to put on before coming here, and not enough on my attributes. Aren't you Americans known for your blubber? Honestly, I'm surprised I don't see any bowling balls in this room right now. Next question. Lena Becker, Washington Post. You looked very determined to win the matchup between you and Miles Turner tonight. Do you hold any certain animosity towards him for any reasons? Other than him having a beautiful full head of hair compared to me balding since I was 14, no. He's a decent center on a decent team. His three-point shooting is annoying to guard, but I bet he feels the same way about my game. I'm not worried about him, but I am worried about my hair loss. Damian Patterson, City Free Press. What does it mean to you to be a third-generation NBA player, following in the footsteps of your father Prince and grandfather Chuck? I have never even heard of those guys, and I'm definitely not related to them in any way. They are black. I am white. I grew up in Austria. He played for the Detroit Pistons. Where do you guys get this stuff from? Quit calling him my father. He's a leech that won't leave me alone. My father is a butcher from Vienna who likes to drink himself to sleep. Besides, have you seen the name on the back of my jersey? It says Nowitzki. Does that ring a bell towards any other NBA players in history? Beatrice Corbett, ESPN. There's been some recent concerns about a lack of women in the NBA for roles such as coaches, referees, and many other positions. What is your take on the matter? <sighs> I really don't care, but hey, it's 2023. If a woman wants to coach in the NBA and feels like they can't just because they're a woman, that's a shame. If you ask me, that's just women being lazy. Transition into a man, get the job, and switch back into a woman. Simple, easy, done. All right, is that it? No? Too bad. I'm out of here. Thank you, guys. That's going to do it for episode one of the career of Nikola Nowitzki. This is my first time making a video like this, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know what you would want to see in future videos like this and what questions you would like to have featured in the press conference. You know me, as long as it doesn't get me demonetized, I'll answer just about anything. I've already played 32 games of the season, so I have more than enough videos to make. And trust me, I am a much better player by now and playing on Superstar difficulty, about to go to Hall of Fame. But yeah, unless you're a woman, don't forget to wipe front and back. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one.